Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's episode, we're gonna do another type of model that I like doing. This is a, a miniature room from Row Life. So the models they make, all the parts and pieces are pretty decent size, so they're easy to handle and put together. But everything's in the kit that you see in the, in the picture. So um, I'll get into the box, I'll open it up, and I'll just show you everything that comes with it. And uh, as always, I'll just step by step once we get into it to, to putting this together. I did one of these last year, uh, enjoyed it. It was something a little different one I hadn't done before. So I decided to do another one this year. And uh, I may do a couple other ones. We'll, we'll see how it goes. So, but as always, if you uh, like what I'm doing, uh, please uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment, share. Uh, I appreciate everybody that's watched all my videos so far. I've tried to, you know, put good content out there for everyone to enjoy on how I put the models together and uh, hopefully to uh, point you in the right direction if you're having trouble with it. And with that, I'll open this box up, show all the pieces, and uh, we'll get started. Okay, so I've opened our box. This is our DIY miniature house, uh, Lisa's Taylor room. I'll get in a little closer in the picture. So this is what it's supposed to look like. And as I've said before, the picture always looks perfect on any type of model and everything, but um, we'll get it to look almost as close as what it looks on the box. So over here, it's your glue, a couple of things of glue, and in the bottle is paint. Here's some other little uh, sheets. These are gonna be little paper clippings that you'll be cutting out and using in the model in some shape form. Um, this is just like a little inventory sheet and we'll use that later to uh, mark some of the pieces and everything. And then just some other little templates that uh, we'll be using. So now these bags on top here, this is all the furniture. And as you can see, it's all in pieces and the bags are numbered. So when you're going through your instruction guide or an instruction book, it'll give you the bag number, you know, in case you don't know which part that you're looking for. In case there's a couple that look kind of similar. And then uh, these are just some of the smaller pieces and other things that are included. So just some little knickknacks and doodads and whatever, but it all looks kind of little discombobulated and everything now, but uh, everything has a purpose and everything, and some rods and all that. And then this one actually has fabric and that is actual fabric that's in the bag with some yarn and some other stuff. Uh, so and this is just, just another bag with just some other parts and pieces and everything. So, and then this is uh, some electrical because there's a light at the top that you can uh, turn on and everything. So it gives you instructions on how to do that. And then, uh, then here's the instruction guide. Now I'll just kind of flip through a couple pages just to show you everything. Just shows you all the tools that you'll need, kind of how to go through certain parts of the steps. And then, uh, you know, it shows you what you're going to be building, you know, this cabinet right here and then it tells you all the pieces that you're going to need for it and then you just start with step one and just go through you know until you get the cabinet built and then it moves on to the next step and then you just continue on so but this is the walls and the base that we're going to be using so that's kind of how this the scale of how big the model is going to be and everything so i'll just kind of pan back and show you so that's everything that's in it that's kind of doesn't look like a lot but a lot of small pieces and trying to get it all put together and everything so um and our little paper stuff but with that uh, we'll uh get all this packed away and uh, get to the first step and we'll get going kind of take you through a couple things and then um 
we'll get started on the uh, first couple steps that it wants us to do and everything. But for that, you see, I kind of have the got the instruction book out. I got some got some tools out, and uh, with this one, they give you the glue. They uh, give you this type of glue, which is a little bit stronger. It sets pretty quick, but you can kind of still move the pieces around a little bit before it sets. And then this type of glue is more for the paper or the fabric. So you got a little bit more play with it, but uh, it just doesn't bleed through the, the paper or the fabric as much and everything. As you can see, I kind of already have the first pieces out. They give you this little uh, piece guide that uh, you can line up the piece to to match the size to ensure that you have the correct piece which is kind of nice it has it on both sides and everything so if you're not for sure on the size you can uh, you know put the piece up to the diagram to see if it matches the uh, this specific number that you're looking for because there are a couple pieces that are pretty close to the same size and everything and just to ensure that you line them up on the correct spot on the guide it has these little lines already marked on the pieces so so what they want you to do is you know line the piece up with the diagram and then with a ruler or a uh, a level or whatever then they just want you to to draw the lines on the exact same spot as um, the piece. So that way you know exactly uh, where the shelves are gonna be once you line them up. And uh, you just do that for each of your pieces that you're gonna be using. Uh, but with that, uh, we can kind of get started. Uh, for these first couple steps, they want you to, to put some uh, like knobs on these. Uh, these are supposed to be doors. So they got these little beads right here. As you can see, they're rolling around. So, but they want these to be like little knobs or handles to put over the holes to fit in. So we are going, and this glue, like I said, it, it'll has a little bit of play, but um, it does set uh, pretty well. And then by the end, you know, at least more than six hours or 12 hours, but at least, 12 hours or more, it'll really set. And uh, the tip, uh, I tried to trim it off as, as small as I could uh, to make sure, you know, not a lot of the glue comes out because you want to, you want a, a very small entry or exit point just so you don't have it going all over the place. But, uh, but as it comes out, it, and it's one of the glues where it'll uh, kind of do a little bit of string. So, but I'll just do both. Oops. And then sometimes you get the air pockets. There we go. But it has that, and you can either use your hands or if you want to use tweezers or whatever, you can do that. But once you get it on the glue, you can just kind of just set it on there. And then that on there and then once this glue dries then the little stringy parts of it you can uh, you know remove later now this is supposed to be the front part of the drawer and they've done these with a, some of the, the other model that I did where they had these little decorative uh, pieces to go on the drawer so it'll be kind of the same where you just put it over the hole like that and then they provide you with, with the wire. And sometimes it's usually a longer piece that you have to cut to a specific point, or a specific uh, length. And uh, usually the units that they use is millimeters, so you gotta get a, a ruler with either centimeters or millimeters to measure it out. But this one actually came the perfect uh, size that they want you to do. So, um, but with this one, what I did was uh, to make it even on both sides. I just laid it down next to the holes, made it sure it was the same distance from the, from the hole to the outside on both sides, and then marked it. And then 
And what I'm going to do is just use some pliers and then put it right on where I marked it and then just bend it down. And then do the same for this side. And a lot of these things, they don't give you extra pieces. So you definitely got to ensure that you uh, are careful with it. And it looks like I was off just by a little bit. So, so if that's the case, then you can always, if you got some, uh, some wire cutters, you can always just cut off the excess. And, uh, and then you just kind of make sure it's level over the hole, make sure they go in really well. So what I usually like to do, instead of just gluing these decorative pieces on and then gluing the handle on, I just put some glue in there and then do both at the same time. That way, when you stick the handle down into the hole, the glue will just take it on down with it. I mean, you can put a little bit more glue than what you normally do if you, if you feel comfortable with it. And I just put these on. Put that on. And then carefully. Put them in the holes and then get them to fit. There we go. And just, you know, the glue's still good enough for you can just make sure it's level. And make sure that the handle is sitting straight up. It's not angled down or back or anything like that. So now, what I want you to do is, this is kind of like the front door of the cabinet, so, and, uh, you know, already drew the lines where uh, they want you to, that kind of, you know, helps you level it off and everything, so. And as long as you're close, I mean, that's all that matters. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, just do a little bit or so. At least the majority of it's covered. Like so there's not going to be any pressure put on it or anything. Plus, you don't want to put too much where it leaks off the sides or anything. But you want to make sure that it's level level or just a little bit inside the edge you know it's supposed to be a door so I'm not really too level with it but leave a little bit of room but like I said nobody's really gonna notice and again you can always use uh, tweezers or something else you know if if you're having trouble handling the, the pieces because some of these pieces do get a little little tiny and everything so I only completed one other uh, model like this see and I'm pushing against it pushing against it like I said you know you got some play with, uh, with the glue, it, it doesn't set right away, but um, it does hold really well once it sets in after you know a full day or a few hours. So, there we go. So, there's the front door of the bottom cabinet, but we'll just have to set it aside right now. Just make sure you don't uh, you know, have it in the way, or if you have another pad that you can use to set your completed pieces on that you're, you know, letting dry after you glue them together and all that, then that would probably be recommended as well. I don't. Okay, so if, if you look ahead and you know you're gonna, you know, glue a couple pieces together before attaching it to a bigger piece, then 
you know, it's better just to go ahead and, and do that, just so it's, you're not waiting on it to dry, especially if it's warped like this one is. And since this one is a little warped, and I'm gonna use a little bit more glue, just to make sure it stays. Okay, got a clamp on that one, and we'll get a clamp on that one. And I'm just putting them in the middle to make sure it's not going anywhere. Okay. So, see, you can use office supplies for more than just office supplies. All right, so we'll set that aside for now. <clears throat> and these pieces aren't too bad warped. They got a little curve to them, but Again, you just gotta work with what you got. It's always good to test the pieces first to see which way we're going here. Okay, yeah. So, these are actually gonna go on, this, on the sides. And then the lines you drew should match up to show where the shells are gonna go. So, so if you're on a flat surface, you can just you know glue it to the bottom and then just stick it in there and it should be good. So I'll just do one at a time, and again, you know, you got some time to mess with it if you mess up or whatever but put too much on don't want to put too much on don't want it to and you just want it right up against it and just hold it for a few seconds you want to make sure the bottoms are lined up the tops are lined up because this is a cabinet it's supposed to be sitting straight and as long as the lines are straight up, then it should be good. And you just put that in there like so. And then again, just making sure everything's level, top and bottom. And then since these are a little bit pliable, you got a little bit of play, then you can start putting these shells in to where they go. to hold the side pieces on. So you wanna look at them and make sure that they're, uh, there's really no right or wrong way to put these in. They're, it's all the same color on all the sides, but you just gotta look at the, see if one's maybe a little warped one side or from the other. Put some glue on it. And then I try not to angle it as I'm putting it in, I'll just put it straight in. Right where the line's supposed to be. And then push it in. You know, if they get some glue on it, then I'll just wipe it off. Come on, come on, come on. As I said, the glue's kind of stingy, but get it in there. And again, if you work with the pieces quick enough, then, you know, if you need to adjust something, you can. look for any loose glue pieces so but that's uh you know one of the cabinets Let's see how this is doing yep looks like it's hanging in there pretty good this will go right on top just like that 
need to sand down a little bit there because it's not really not really level. Went ahead and put the top on. The two pieces, you know, were glued together pretty well. So just got it level on there, glue, and but it's actually, uh, you know, glue's holding pretty well, like I said. So, but, so there's the first little cabinet. So now, we're gonna be putting all the fabric and some other stuff inside of it and everything, so. So now, next step is we're gonna make some fabric. So they do a good job with giving you some templates uh, out of uh, some thick paper that you can use for a lot of the things that you need to cut out or whatever. So they have these little strips that you'll be using for the fabric. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fold this over on the line just so it's already folded for me so I don't have to worry about it while it's in the fabric or anything so and if you're just off the line and I'm sure that's fine too but so the way I do this you know, if you have a ruler that's got millimeters more power to you but this one's got centimeters so and on the instructions it said it tells you the exact length that you need to cut the fabric you know it says 50 by 80 millimeters so it says 50 millimeters, so that means five centimeters. So, but since this is almost eight, so I'm just gonna like trim it about right there. And then I'm gonna turn and cut me five off about right there. Okay. Now usually what you can do, where you got a cut, you can fold it, give you a nice little line, you can draw a line on there with a little marker, or a pen, pencil, whatever, just so you know you're cutting a straight line. And like I said, it don't have to be perfect, but as long as you're close. Okay, I'm gonna use the other type of glue. Oh, there it is. So, it doesn't need too much, just a little bit to just hold it. It said it bleeds through a little bit, but not too bad. And you're not really gonna see it anyway. So, and then, Just put just a little with this glue, even just little dabs are, are good enough to hold it. So it's just fabric, so it's not gonna go anywhere. So hold that in, and so Just do the same on the other side, just, there we go. Okay. And then with your fold lines that you already folded, then you're just gonna fold these ends. That down and just throw a couple. And there you go. That's it. And that'll be a little. And you can use your uh, little clamps to kind of hold it together while it's drying. But that'll be like a little piece of fabric that's going to go on one of the shelves in the cabinet and everything. So, but that's pretty much it. So I'll be doing this seven more times, and then I'll come back and uh, we'll go to the next step. 
All right, so we got all of our fabric done, as you can see up here along the top. Wasn't too difficult, but it's just, just a lot of them to do. So nice little padded little fabric pieces glued together and everything. So, so it turned out pretty well. So the next thing is we are making some pillows. So in one of the sheets that it gives you, and it's another little template that you can cut out. It's just made of uh, regular paper instead of the thicker paper. And I already cut the fabric out. So it's almost the same as the uh, fabric. You're just using this template so you can get a, the fabric folded a certain way. And you just line it up in the middle as best you can. And then what you're doing is just folding the sides over. And then you, the paper should be folded in the middle, so you want to just fold that, keeping the sides in as best you can. So, and all you're doing is just trying to pinch the sides in to keep the shape of what it's looking for. And then, you're going to bring the top down. And fold that down. And then do the same for the other side. Fold it over like that. And you just want you to pinch the sides all the way around just to get the shape to stay. Get the lines and the fabric and everything. Then, you want to unfold it and then take the paper out. And then refold it to the way you had it. It should stay in its shape, so it should fold back a lot easier. And then, what you're wanting to do is glue two of the sides together. So you just start on one end. You don't need a lot, you're just kind of putting some little drops in here. And for this part, you want to make sure to do the top part of this one as well because it's got nothing to stick to or anything. So with that, you just close it together. Just get rid of any excess. And if you have any little fabric pieces sticking out or whatever, you can always uh, try cutting them. If you want to, you don't have to, but on this folded side where it has the ends you want to go ahead and glue this as well and again not too much just some little dabs that you can put in there and just get rid of the excess and just kind of hold it until it sits in there really good we got some uh, some little uh, silk, uh, like floss or whatever you want to call it, uh, padding that uh, we're going to be putting in. So I'm just going to let that dry a little bit more and I'm going to look at these other ones that we did that I did. So this is one. You got it in there already. So just kind of squishing the sides a little bit. And you can plump them however you want. They don't have to be perfect or anything, but you know, pinching the sides, get those little ears going. Got that one. And this one I didn't put as much padding inside of it. Because uh, if you try to put too much padding, then uh, it'll, uh, you know, probably won't be able to close it as much or it'll try to push the glue out and everything. So. You just want to just kind of squeeze the ends just to get some type of resemblance of a pillow and everything. So, all right, so this didn't turn out too bad. So, now I want to get the padding into this. So, first, you just want to just use your finger, just start stuffing. And if 
it looks like it's going to be too much, you can always remove some of it and everything. Because again, you don't want it so full that you're going to break the seals of the glue and everything. But, but it doesn't look too bad. It's like it's holding. Glue the ends in. And with this little edge right here, since you get the little flaps, you want to glue top and the bottom just so it has something to stick to. So, just gonna just go through that and then put some on the top here. And then I'm just I'm gonna close it and then I'm gonna use my little office uh, clamps because that, the padding is gonna try to push it out. Try to open it up, so I'll just use these clamps to keep it sealed for a little bit, you know, maybe five, ten minutes or whatever until, until I feel the glue's gonna hold and not open up or anything like that, and then we'll have our third pillar. We gotta build these boxes, which I already done three, but in the uh, cardboard templates that they give you, they pretty much give you the box to make with the number on it that you uh, need to that it's going to be used for in uh, in the steps and everything. So I went ahead and did the other three, um, and it's, they're easy to cut out. If you see, there's some jagged, some dotted lines, and then there's some solid solid lines that go around the edges, and then there's a little solid line. There's a little solid line right here, and right here. So in the instructions it says the dotted line is to fold and the, the solid line is where you cut. So when you're cutting around it, you just gotta make sure to cut this little line right here because you're gonna be folding these little wings in because this is really the bottom of the uh, box that we're gonna be doing. So, so uh, for what I have found to make it easy to fold paper or the cardboard or anything like that I always use just a uh, long nose pliers because uh, you can actually go down the line grab the other end and be able to fold it up now you can also use some of the thicker ones you know grab it in the middle and fold it if you need to but this one's a little longer so so if you just grab it right there you'll be able to fold it up and it'll fold it right on the line of what you need. And then you just go around and wherever there's a dotted line, you just grab and fold. And then if you need to, you know, with your finger, just kind of fold it in a little bit more just to get the, get it to, to stay up on the line. But you just keep going around, just aligning this along the line and just fold. And then fold. Okay, and then just kind of working it a little bit. Now, what I usually like to do, and usually I will use the like the paper and the fabric glue, because again, this is still paper. You don't want it bleeding through too much, and this actually holds the the cardboard pretty well. Uh, I always start with the bottom, and I always work on one side going around instead of trying to put it all together and glue it and it's just it's a pain in the butt so i'll just start on one side and i'll glue the little tab for the wing and i'll just throw i'll just throw some dots like i said you don't really have to use a lot but i always try at least to get the ends and then i'll just line it up and just Make sure it's level with the bottom. Just kind of hold it. And then I'll get the needle, the other pair of pliers, and I'll go down and crimp it to get it to stay. And if the, uh, the piece is too long, then the needle nose will work just as well too. But I'll just get it to crimp it down and just wipe off any excess glue or whatever. And you just want to fold it over. Just fold it down like 
so. Lining up the edges. Sometimes you may have to hold it a little longer just to get it to stay. And you can use the needle nose on the longer piece here since it's a whole piece. And just wipe off the excess. And then go down. Just crimping the edges here. And there you go. So there's your nice little box. And you got the number on the inside if it's referring, if the instructions were referring to a specific box for putting stuff in or doing something on the outside, then you'll have the number on the on the inside of the box or the outside, um, to, just so you know which box you're going to be working with and everything. But there you go. So there's your four boxes. So the next step they want us to do is use this twine and wrap it around or pretty much glue it around this box m16 yep so just start at the bottom and then work my way around going all the way until i hit the top now they give you a, a distance a length to cut it off this but i usually try not to mess with that just in case i cut it too short or anything so i'll just leave it as one roll and then once i get close to the top then i'll i'll cut it off At least try to because this glue will hold this a lot better than the other than the other uh, other glue and you want to get it as close to the bottom as possible that you can just kind of hold it for a few seconds just continue all the way around until you get all the way to the top so it's pretty it's pretty simple but it just takes a little bit of time and you don't want to use too much glue don't want it spreading around and i'm usually leaving the the glue bottle on its side so i don't have to keep waiting for the glue to come back down or anything so, but I'm just trying to make sure it doesn't uh, doesn't leak out or anything like that. So, but this is pretty much what you do though. Just hold on to it and just go all the way around till you reach the top. So, close as possible to the other one. And if you want, even want to put some glue on it, that's fine too. type of space or anything. I just wanna just make a nice little tight spot, a spiral going all the way around. And you just may have to hold it for a few seconds. Like I said, you wanna make sure it's not going anywhere, but you don't want it uh, coming off or anything. It's starting to look pretty good. Okay, everyone. So we finished the one basket uh, over here. So got the twine wrapped around it, and it wanted you to put some of the fabric inside of it. So just kind of put that in there like that. And then it wanted you to wrap it around one of the other baskets, one of these bigger ones. So I just did the same process. Just started at the bottom, worked my way around till I got all the way up to the top. Oh, and then it also wants you to put these little handles on the, on the end. So I already did one, but I wanted to just show doing another one. What I did was I just cut a, a, a certain length where I thought it would look right on the side. It doesn't really tell you a size or anything like that, but I just cut a certain length and then I just started cutting it down shorter and shorter until it looked right. So we'll just uh, be putting it on, on the side right here. Right. Then you just gotta kind of find the center. What you think is the center? And then just kind of hold it. 
And then if you want, you can always get the pliers and kind of push them down in place. And then, then I'm just gonna flatten it just to make it look like it's pressed against the, the box. And then I'm just gonna just kind of bend this back just a little bit. And then just kind of make the handles a little bit rounder. All right, there we go. Okay, so we got our next box. Another small one. So we cut the fabric the size that it asked for. And pretty much what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be folding this or gluing it around the top part of the box, but then also stuffing it on the inside of the box as well. With little tack spots to, to hold it in place. You're not looking for, you know, a ton of glue or anything like that. Just looking for a good spot. You know, at least about halfway down. Just line it up with the edge. So here and then, and then uh, you're just gonna push it down into it or uh, you can put little spot little glue spot tacks in you know the bottom of the box so you can see just put little glue spots in there and then I'm just gonna start with one side and get it to sit down and then I'm going to push this one in get it to sit down and then push this one in get it to sit and then finally just push this one in and get that to sit and then just kind of go back and just kind of get it to fit in a little bit better just using my finger just pushing it down but, but there you go. So, so, fabric on the outside of the box and everything, so. <sighs> okay, so the next step, we're kind of putting the calendar together. So it had a little template uh, for the metal part that you put the template over and I used my little clamp to hold the template in place and then just kind of Use just some regular scissors and just just cut around it to get the template. And as long as you're close, that's that's totally fine. And then now, where the lines are, that's where it's wanting you to bend. So you're flipping it forward. Like that, and then where this one is, just kind of bending this forward, just so I can see how it's gonna look. And then this piece, you're gonna bend it backwards. calendars has the same rule it's got some dotted lines on it these were together single line in the middle I just cut it because it wants two separate so what they want you to do is start folding these 
like back and forth just like this and you're just folding it right on the line as you're going down keeping it straight Trying to keep them as the same size as possible. I know it's hard sometimes. Okay. Okay, so now it wants us to to glue these together, which I am only probably just gonna do the little top part here. them together and that's just so it uh, just wipe off excess so that way you can you know flip through all the pages and everything but on the top and then I'll just throw a little bit on the front because we're gonna be pressing these together okay This glue here. So now you just line it up level. Just kind of squish it together. And then you can it says you can make a little mark on here, which I'm gonna try to do here. Try to I didn't make it as good as what they show, but I just kind of pressed it in just to have something there, yeah, which is fun. And then what we're going to do is and then paste it. I mean, just throw a couple in the middle. I don't know if the metal will stick or not, but we'll find out. Just put it there. Actually, it looks like a good spot right there. And then just press it down. I'm just gonna throw a little bit of glue there. Get the string out of the way. Little little bead right here that I'm gonna throw on there and make it look like a nail. So that's uh, what that looks like. So like a little calendar. All right, everyone. I think we're about done with this uh, file cabinet or or fabric cabinets. Last thing we're gonna do is uh, build a coffee maker. So I've got all the pieces lined out right here. Hold this with the wire so I can get the glue down. I'm not gonna put too much down on it. Try not to, but I have a feeling I'm going to. So, and then, I think I'm gonna switch. I got two kinds of sets of pliers here. So this one I'm gonna put Hold the piece and then try to get this to line up right. And just 
just gotta make sure it's level on the top and the bottom and the side. around it just enough to hold it okay and then when you put it on here you just got to make sure just make sure it's, it's a little even make sure it's uh, in the middle on all sides make sure it's low and the main thing you just want to make sure the holes are lined up on it. So there's one. Right, let's set that on here. And again. Making sure that the hole is good. Okay. this brown wire that we had to cut a certain distance. I think it was like 40 centimeter or 40 millimeters. So and it wants us to curl like six. Six millimeters, about right there. I usually get a thicker pair of pliers. it pretty much make sure it touches up there and then I want you to curl it up in like an L shape. Just cut those on a little bit on the side. So we're putting this little barrel bearing in here. Make sure that's set, so I'm just going to lay that back down, let that dry. Piece right here. drawer that you're pulling out and everything so oops okay and then it wants us to bend just 
Spin that up a little bit, like so. And it wants you to mark out an inch of where the bend is. Just get it more straight. But pretty much mark out an inch of where the bend is. Kind of find it. it the other way and this is pretty much gonna be like a crank when it gets down in there I would definitely suggest if you do this make sure the wire goes into the bead before you uh, do all this other stuff because uh, the holes very uh, small on the bead for the wire to fit into so I just had to Use with some pliers, just kind of crimped the end of the wire a little bit uh, all the way around. Try to get it a little bit smaller, and then uh, the bead got it to fit on there a little bit. And then, uh, so I just put some glue on top, and it's there. So, uh, as long as nothing hits it or knocks it off, then it should be fine. <laughs> so, now what we're gonna do is have that go through the bottom all the way through and then this will sit right on top okay so we're going to put some glue around the edge here okay just gonna let that sit for a few minutes So with that, we should be done. So now, I'll just put little, little dots. Again, this is super thin fabric, so you don't really need to put too much onto it, but you're just wanting to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so I got another little piece of shelf paper or something we're going to be putting in, so... Again, not too much, so I'm just... You can bend this down if you want. I think it's just to show that you got stuff hanging over or whatever, so. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue right there. It doesn't really matter how you put it in here, but at least want it to where it's kinda facing the side. And then I'll just throw some of the glue on top of it. pieces going anywhere or anything so so, so I'm trying to just making sure the pieces don't go anywhere and then and if you have trouble getting the glue stick our bottle inside like this then you can always just glue the piece itself before you stick it in there and that way you know it's gonna hit where you want there we go so you got those right there
that there. Just gonna just lay this one down. And then throw that on top. Again, you can you can do what you like. You can do what you like on uh, your pieces. Don't have to be completely full or exactly the way it shows in the picture. Kind of blocking some of the view, whatever, but just put a little bit of glue, get the stringies out of the way. And I'm gonna put that right in there and just push it down. front a little bit there we go now we got the pillow and I'll just put some on the bottom and I'm just gonna just shove it in there it ain't gonna go anywhere here we go so there's the inside part put a little So the pictures you don't really need to use too much glue and they don't really have to be straight either but just put that on there and then you get this to put on here so I am going to glue the back of this just so I know I don't have to try to guess we're on here to, to put the glue to make sure I get it all And you can leave this on its side to wait for this to dry if you want. Give it a couple minutes. Okay. Get that out of the way. Now you want to make sure wherever you have your handle that it's not sitting too far back where it goes past the back of the the back of the cabinet because if this is going to go against the wall you don't want this sitting there uh, further than the cabinet itself you don't want this any further back than what the cabinet is because if this is sitting against the wall then that's going to get in the way so cabinet with all the fabric got the calendar and a little picture on the side and everything so yeah we took a few hours <laughs> But that's the way this is going to be though, you're going to work on each little furniture piece and then put on it or in it whatever they want it to go in it, that way it's completely done and then when you put the entire model together then you, all you need to do is just slide this, this piece onto the spot that it needs to go to and you're done. I appreciate you watching, uh, as always like and comment, uh, like and share and comment. Um, and uh, we'll uh, we'll get going on the next episode, and uh, we'll see what uh, what they have us going then. So I uh, appreciate you watching. See you next episode.